So this is what the dog looks like so far. I have the ears sewn on. And now, after the ears are in place, then you're going to make the hair that goes across the front of the head. And so you make your loops the same way. And for my length, I made the length of the loops, I measured it down the back of the head to the body. So here you can see how the loop will extend down to the body on the back of the head. So that's the length that I used. And I'm going to loop again, like I said, across the front of the head. So after I cut all of the loops on the front, you can see how I made loops all the way across the front of the forehead for the dog. Then just lay the dog on its side so that you can brush the hair out. And so this is how I brush the front of the head. And just take and brush it on a hard surface. And you can see how I'm starting to fill my bag, Ziploc bag, with a little bit of stuffing. I don't have much, so you shouldn't be brushing it to where you have this bag already full. You can see I just have a little bit in there. Then, after you finish brushing out that first row, you're going to move that aside to the front of the dog, and you're going to start on your second row. So I went two rows back behind the first row, and I'm going to start looping the same length of hair right behind the first row. Then you're ready to make, this is the second row that I made on top of the head. This is the back of the head, and here's the back of the ear. So this was where I put my next row of hair. And you just want to make sure that the hair reaches the back, here's the body, and here's the neck of the dog. So the back of the body, you want to make sure the hair is long enough to reach down. And you can see how I'm starting to make the row of loops right across the back of between the ears on the back of the head. Then the next row of hair that I made was just above the neck. So this is the back of the head, just above the neck, where it attached. And then I made the same length. So the length is still to the back of the body. So this is what your dog should look like so far, after putting all those rows of hair. And this is what it looks like on the back. And here is the other Afghan dog that I made. So for now, I wouldn't add any more hair to the head. We're going to make the legs first before you do that because I was able to use the full skein for one dog, but I went back and filled in areas that I wanted to after I made sure that I had enough to cover the other areas. So for this is optional, but I had a little bit of a pink yarn left over from another project. So I'm going to use a little bit of the pink yarn on mine in between where I already put some hair. But you don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can just go ahead and go straight to the legs with me for the next part. But here you can see how I just used with the front row of the hair, I just put a rubber band around it. So I basically made a loop with the front row of the hair. And then I just grabbed the loop of hair like this. And then I just put a rubber band around the loop that I made. And then I just put the bow in the front of the loop. You can also bring some of the hair forward to make a braid, just like I did here. You can see how I made a braid, and then I just tied the bottom of the braid with a ribbon. So you can, so you can have fun with the hair and create your own designs. For this one I'm going to go ahead and take out the bow because I'm going to add a little bit of the pink yarn in between where I put the white yarn. Again, I said that's optional so you don't have to do that. So now we're going to make the legs. We're going to start with the paws and we're going to start with the magic circle. So you just take your same colored yarn as the dog and drape it across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. 
And then just take your crochet hook, go under those two loops around your fingers, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle. So you just go under those two loops, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through both loops for a single crochet. And you're going to do that six times and then come back. So now I have a total of six single crochet in the magic circle. Then I'm just going to take my forefinger and thumb and just hold the base of the six single crochet. And then you have these two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one of them. If it doesn't close, just let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. And then just grab that loose yarn end and pull on that. And then turn your work, and we're going to work into that first stitch in the round. And you're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch. And you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. So two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 in the round and then come back. Then you're just going to place your yarn marker where you left off and we're going to crochet in the round. But before you do that, if you need to close the center of your magic circle, just turn your work over and pull on that loose yarn end on the back and then that will close up the center nicely. Then we're going to start our increase round. So we're going to make a total of five increase rounds and we're going to go in chronological order. So starting with the first one, you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker so one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have 18 stitches in the round and for each increase round that we're going to make, I'm not going to give you the stitch count because all you have to do is add six after each round and that will be your stitch count. So then, for the next round, increase round, we're going to move the yarn marker up. And then for this increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches. And then two single crochet into the third stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Okay, so I'm just going to make one more. I'm going to tell you the stitches for this round so, so that you understand what I'm talking about. The last round we had 18 stitches. So if you add 6 to 18, you get 24. So this round that we finished will have 24. So the next round that we finish, you add 6 to that, and you have 30. So that's how you found your, find your stitch count, because we started with a magic circle of 6. So now, go ahead and move your yarn marker up. And for this increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into 3 stitches. and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then for the next increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the fifth stitch. Repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. And then the last increase round that you're going to make is one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the sixth stitch. Then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So you should have finished that last increase round with 42 total stitches. Now we're not going to be making any increase rounds. You're going to maintain the stitch count. So now this round you're only going to make one single crochet 
in every stitch around for only one round. So one round of only one single crochet in every stitch around. Back to the yarn marker. Then just move your yarn marker up and we're going to make the front of the paw. And to do that we're going to make decrease stitches or we're going to single crochet two stitches together 12 times. So I'm just going to show you the first couple of them. So you're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to go into the next stitch over and you're going to bring up a loop and then you're going to go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a decrease stitch. It's also known as single crochet two stitches together. So that's our first one. Now we're going to single crochet two stitches together for our second decrease stitch. And you're going to repeat this until you have a total of 12 decrease stitches or 12 single crochet two stitches together. So that's our third one. So I'll make one more with you. So this is the fourth one. So go ahead, finish 12 decrease stitches and then come back. So I finished my 12 decrease stitches and you can see how it makes a little curve for the front of the paw. And I have my loose yarn end on the inside or the wrong side. Then after you finish your 12 decrease stitches or single crochet two stitches together, you're going to make one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches. back to the yarn marker and then come back. Then when you reach the yarn marker go ahead and bring it up to where you left off and this time you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch around. So one single crochet into every stitch around back to the yarn marker So now I have 30 stitches total in the round. I'm going to go ahead and move the yarn marker up. And now we're going to make 6 decrease stitches. So you're going to single crochet 2 stitches together 6 times. And then you're going to make 1 single crochet into any of the remaining stitches back to the yarn marker. So there's my second single crochet two stitches together. And again, you're going to make six of them. And then after you finish your six single crochet two stitches together, then you're going to make one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches back to the yarn marker. So now you should have 24 total stitches in the round and you have your little paw formed. Then just move the yarn marker up and now you're not going to have increase or decrease stitches. You're only going to make one single crochet in every stitch around and each time you reach the yarn marker you should have a total of 24 stitches in your round. And you're not going to remove your yarn marker. You're going to keep on crocheting in rounds until you've completed 40 rounds. So you need 40 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. And then as you start to crochet up the leg, you might want to add some stuffing into the paw and then just add stuffing, craft stuffing, as you are making the leg portion. So again, one single crochet in every stitch around for 40 rounds and then come back. So I just finished the 40 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. You can go ahead and remove your yarn marker and make sure that you've stuffed all the way to the top with your craft stuffing. Then we're going to get ready to close. 
So that now you're just going to make decreased stitches all the way around or a single crochet two stitches together until you're almost closed. And then you're going to slip stitch it closed. So you just can you not uh, the same way that you made the decreased stitches before or a single crochet two stitches together you just keep repeating that all the way around until you're almost closed and then come back and I'll help you slip stitch it closed the rest of the way. So now you can see I'm almost closed so now when you get to this point you can just slip stitch it closed so go ahead and just skip the next stitch and make a slip stitch in the next stitch, so you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops for a slip stitch. And you're just going to keep repeating that all the way around until the hole is completely closed. So I'm almost closed. So one more should do it. Then you can take and just finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then just take your tapestry needle, put it, the loose yarn end onto the tapestry needle and then go right in where you finished off and come out anywhere on the leg. And then just give a gentle tug to pull the loose yarn in through the work. And then just trim your work. And one leg is almost finished. We're going to put some fur on the leg. But you're going to end up making four of these the exact same way. So now you're just going to get your yarn that you're using for the fur and put it onto your tapestry needle. And I went about seven rows up to make my first round of loops and you want to make sure that you have the length to cover the paw. So you can always trim it later but mine's about prob probably about three inches but you can see how it reaches the bottom of the paw and then I just make the loops the exact same size all the way around the bottom of the leg. Now you want to try to conserve as much of your yarn as you can to make sure you can cover the whole dog with one skein. I was able to cover my dog completely with um, one skein of this yarn. You can always go back after you've done the basic covering. You can, if you have any of the yarn left over, you can go back and cover any areas that you want. So I just make one round of loops all the way around back to where you started, making the loops all the same size, and then come back. Then, after you have all of the loops all the way around the bottom, portion of the paw, then you're going to take and just like you did before, you're going to take and cut each individual loop and just tie a knot. So take each loop and just tie a knot and then come back when you're finished cutting all of the loops and tying knots. Then after you finish cutting each of the loops you can take your brush and just lay the leg down and then you just take and brush out the hair to give it that cottony look. This is how mine looks after I'm finished brushing it out. I'm not going to trim it yet. I'm just going to leave it because we're going to put one more row of looped yarn at the top of the leg. So for the hair at the top of the leg, I counted from the top of the leg down approximately nine rows. And then just take and loop 
the hair and make sure that the hair reaches the bottom fur. So you want the length to reach all the way down. And then you just loop the same length all the way around. Then, after you finish putting all of the fur at the top of the leg, then you can take your dog brush and just make it, brush it out and make it look cottony in appearance. Then I'm finished with one leg for now and I didn't, I'm not trimming mine until I finish putting the leg on the dog and finish putting all of the hair and then I'll finish grooming the um, dog once it's all finished. So this is what it looks like so far. So you're going to need four of these legs. So after you finish your four legs, and for one of my legs I used Red Heart Soft White Yarn. So a Red Heart Soft White Yarn will work as well and you can't even um, really, unless I point it out to you, you're not going to be able to tell. So here you can see here's the beige with the Crafter's Secret and then this is the Soft White. So there is a little, you can tell once you point it out, but um, it works really well if you don't have any more of the Crafter's Secret and you want to use your Red Heart Soft White. For mine, I'm using the Dritz upholstery needle and I'm using the 12 inch larger needle for mine. So if you decide to use these, you just have to be really careful because they're very sharp and long. You could make it with the darning needle, but it's very short and you would have to go through the leg first, which I'm going to do the same thing with the longer upholstery needle but it just makes it a lot easier using the longer needle than the darning needle, but it is possible to use the darning needle to do the same thing. So the first thing you're going to do is just put whatever the same colored yarn as your dog onto your upholstery needle, and then you're going to take two of the legs. So I'm taking two just checking the color because I have some soft white ones. It's hard, it's hard even for me to tell which ones are which. So I'm going to try to get um, the closest color that I want in the front. And then once you have the two colors that you want in the front, then you're going to take one of the legs and you're going to go through. Mine is about, let's say, one, two, three, four, five rows down. And you want to make sure that you go through that the paw is facing forward. So make sure that your paw at the bottom is facing forward and you're going to go right into the side of the leg. And you're going to come out at the same level on the opposite side. So you're coming out on the opposite side at the same level. And then just bring the yarn through and you're going to want to leave a long enough loose yarn end for tying a knot. So I just leave a good, probably about five inches. Don't lose it amongst the hair that you have. Make sure that you know which one is the yarn end for pulling for the leg. Then you're going to line it up with the front of the body. Then you're going to go into the body with your upholstery needle and mine is from the bottom of the body. Here's the seam for the bottom of the side panel. So I have two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. So about eleven rows up and about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches back. And then you're going to want to go through the front of the body to the opposite side at the same level. So you can see that I'm coming out on the opposite side of the front of the body at the same exact same level and just bring the yarn through. And you're going to want to leave approximately two inches of yarn between the body and the leg. So here you can see I have about two to three inches to make it about two inches between the body and the front of the leg. And then you're going to grab the other leg. So I'm going to set her down for a second while I get the other leg. 
And then again, you're going to want to make sure that the front paw is facing forward. And then you're going to go through the leg on the side at the same level as the other leg, so about five rows down. And then you're just going to go through the leg and come out on the opposite side at the same level. And then just bring the yarn through. And again, you're going to want about two inches of yarn between the leg and the body. And then you're going to go right back through the leg, about a stitch over. So just go about a stitch over on the leg and come out where you went in on the leg. So I'm just going to bring it up. So here you can see I, I went about a stitch over where I initially went into the leg and just going to go right back through the leg. And then again, I'm only going to leave about two inches between the leg and the body. And then you're just going to go right back through the body, about a stitch over. On the same side, go back through the body. And again, only a stitch over from where you went in. So you can see that I'm coming out of the front of the body about a stitch over. And then I went in on the opposite side about a stitch over. So you can see how this larger upholstery needle just works wonderfully for getting the yarn through the body. I just prefer, some people don't like the movable legs, but I prefer movable legs on mine, which is why I use this method and love this method. So most of my amigurumi are made this way. So now I have the other side. I'm going to go right through the leg, about a stitch over and then just go right back out. Now for mine, I like to go through twice. So now I'm going to go right back through and repeat this whole process a second time. Then you can see how I have the four strands of yarn through between the body and the legs on both sides and then I have my two loose yarn ends. Then what you're going to do is pull on those two loose yarn ends and then just cinch, cinch the legs together against the body. So you just pull on those two loose yarn ends. After you have it pulled and cinched the legs against the body, then you can take and tie a knot and then you're ready to bury the loose yarn ends. And the back legs are, made, are put on the same, the exact same way. Now for the back legs, I still went up along this side. This is the side panel. Here's the bottom of the side panel. You're still going to go up 11 rows, just like you did for the front legs. And then from the back, mm -hmm. so here is the back panel. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 stitches in for mine for the back legs. Now when you're cinching the legs to the body, just be very careful that you don't snap your yarn. You can take and pull one yarn at a time if you need to do that as well. And then, once you've tied your knot, then you're going to get your tapestry needle or darning needle. And then you're going to take the loose yarn end, put it right onto the needle. And then you're going to go right in where you tied the knot. And then come out on the opposite side of the leg. And then just cinch the loose yarn end down. And then just trim it. Go ahead and bury all of your loose yarn ends. So now, after you have your legs in place, 
We're going to go right across the back of the dog and we're going to place the fur. So now you're going to take your skein of yarn that you're using for fur and we're going to take and we're going to make loops that cover the side of the dog. So we're going to take and go right down the center of the back. So find the center of the back and I'm going to start from the bottom because we're going to place loops of hair on this side of the back as well as on the opposite side of the back. So the tail is going to go about right here so you're going to want to start up a little bit higher to give room for the tail. So mine is about one, two, three, four to five stitches in. And then you just take and bring the yarn through and you want the length of the yarn to cover the legs and you can always groom your dog after we're finished so I wait until I'm finished before I finish grooming the dog so you want to make sure that the length and you don't have to go to the bottom of the paw you just want to go to about mid foot or leg because you already have some fur on the leg itself you're just mainly covering the top portion of the leg so mine just reaches to about a little bit more than half of the leg and then I'm going to make all of the loops the exact same size And you're going to do this all the way to the neck of the dog. So then after you finish making loops all the way up the back of the dog, then you're going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. And again, each of the loops are going to be cut and then tied. Each individual loop is cut and then you tie a knot. Now the next area you're going to work after you finish the back is along the side of the dog and across the front to the opposite side. So here you can see where I left off on the back. So I'm just going to make a loop the same length as the back, about mid-leg. And then you're just going to loop up the side of the neck And then, after you finish looping up the side of the neck, you're going to go across the front. So then you just follow across that, round, that row across the front to the opposite side and then loop the same way. And you want the same length to cover the side down to the leg and then you just go across the front. Then I just wanted to show how I made the loops of yarn from one side of the upper neck to the opposite side. And the loops of yarn fall approximately one to two inches down the length of the lower loops of yarn. So these lower loops of yarn will recover completely cover the front of the body of the dog and then the upper loops of yarn don't need to reach the lower body front of the body they just need to cover the lower neck loops of yarn that way you don't waste all of your yarn and you still should have quite a bit of yarn left over this is how much I have left over and my dog is almost completely covered I still need to cover the back where the tail is but for now I'm going to make sure that I cut each of the loops of yarn 
and then tie a knot and then brush out all of the yarn. And before I continue on, I'm going to show you how to make the tail. Now to make the tail, you're just going to take the same colored yarn as the main color of your dog. You're going to drape it across your four fingers. We're going to start with a magic circle. Use your thumb to stabilize and then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and hold in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then just take your crochet hook, you're going to go under those two loops around the middle fingers, just bring up a loop, and then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle. That's four, five, and six. Then you're going to take your forefinger and your thumb. You're going to hold the base of the six single crochet. Then you have these two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one. This one's closing. Then just take that loose yarn in and pull on that. And then turn your work to start in that first stitch and you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. So two single crochet into every stitch around for a total of 12 stitches in the round and then come back. Now you can take and turn the work over and pull on that loose yarn end on the back to close the center of the magic circle. And we're going to make only one increase round. So just take your yarn marker, place it right where you left off, and make one single crochet into the first stitch, and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker so one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch and by the time you get to the yarn marker you're going to have a total of 18 stitches in the round. Then just take and move your yarn marker up and now you're only going to make one single crochet in every stitch around until you have the length that you want for your tail. So for my tail I made 49 rounds of one single crochet into every stitch around. After you finish your 49 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch then you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and then pull enough yarn through to sew the tail onto the dog. Now this part is optional. I um, put in a 12 gauge Derice wired aluminum foil craft wire into the tail. So my wire I measured to 39 inches because I'm going to coil it in half and then the excess I'm going to coil on top of each other into a circle. So you would measure your wire and then just go maybe a couple rows short so it's not protruding from the end and then once you find where you want the coil to happen you just coil the wire around the inner loop of the circle that you created and you do that on both sides And then 
you just take and squeeze the wire together. Then I took my plumber's tubing that measures one and a half inch inner diameter by five eighths of an inch outer diameter and I cut a twelve and a half inch tube so twelve and a half inches and then you're going to take the end of your wire and you're just going to place it into the tube and this just helps to protect so that the coiled ends or the craft wire doesn't protrude from your crochet work. It keeps it protected and it also helps to add rigidity to the tail and you can make it move the tail in different directions. Now you can take your craft stuffing. I'm just using some of my excess fur that I brushed off from the dog and I'm just going to take and stuff it into the tail and at the same time I'm going to push it in with my coiled tubing and then you're going to continue stuffing around the tubing with your craft stuffing until the tail is stuffed as much as you would like and this is how mine looks after I'm finished. You can see how it's really malleable and this is what the end looks like after putting the stuffing all into the tail. Now it's ready to be sewn on to the dog. Then I just position the tail onto the back of the dog. You can see that I placed it right on the top couple rows of this posterior or back panel. And then here's the top panel for the back of the body. And then you just take and sew all around the base of the tail. Then, after you finish sewing the tail in place, you can take and make loops of hair. I started up in the corner on the top panel of the body and then just made a couple of loops to cover that area. And you want to cover the back of the posterior part of the body. So make the loops just long enough to cover that back portion. And then you just take and make loops of yarn across the back of the body or the posterior portion of the body. So now you should have the dog completely covered and this is how much yarn I have left over. So I'm going to make sure that I cut each loop of yarn and tie a knot and then brush out the hair and then I'm going to place any loops of yarn I'm going to use up my skein on my dog, so I'll just put the yarn wherever I want to fill in any areas with loops of hair. So now I'm going to show you how I made the painted claws or painted toenails. The yarn that I used is by Karen Simply Soft Party. Here's some information about this yarn. The color that I used is Fuchsia Sparkle. So you're going to have a lot of this yarn left over and one of the suggestions that I have if you want a fun crochet project is my quick and easy small magical unicorn or you can make the medium sized magical unicorn. So it's just a fun glittery sparkle yarn. So just take your tapestry or darning needle and just put some of the yarn onto the tapestry needle and you're going to use your magic circle as a landmark and find the center. So here, kind of puff out your paw and then find the center of the paw. So you're going to be coming out, I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rounds up is where you're going to be coming out. So we're going to start, so we know where the center is, came out eight rounds up, so you're going to go over two stitches, one, two, and then you're going to go back to the magic circle and one, two, three rounds up and then you're going to go into the paw and out the side. So here's the center. <clears throat> here's two stitches over. So I'm going to go one more over to make the side claw. 
Then just take and bring the yarn through and make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn in for burying into your work. And then you're going to take and go back in where you first entered and then come out that center where we had the center where we figured the center was for the paw. So here you can see I'm one, two, three stitches over. Here's the center of the paw. Then you just take and bring the yarn through. And then you finished your first claw. Then we're going to make the second claw. So you go straight down. So it's still going to be about almost two to three stitches over. So you went straight down for the center claw. And then you're going to go up to the third stitch, one, two, three, over for the third claw. So you completed the second claw. And now we're going to make the third. So here you can see the one on the side, the one in the center, and now we're going to make the third. So now you're going to go straight, you're going to count over from the center, about one, two, three stitches over, and then go right in. So that third claw will be straight down, but you want to make sure that the stitches between the claws are, are similar or equal. Then come out where you started in the very beginning. And then just pull the yarn through to complete the third claw. Then you just tie a knot And if you want, you can kind of pull up the claws to make sure that they're equal. Then you can take and bury the loose yarn ends. So for my loose yarn ends, I went right where I tied the knot and then go out the back of the foot, anywhere out the back of the foot, and then just pull the loose yarn end and then cut it. So go ahead, bury your loose yarn ends and then you can go and make the rest of your claws or painted claws. To make the collar I'm using my fuchsia, the same fuchsia colored Karen Simply Soft party yarn and we're going to start with a chain of 68. I'm going to show you four of them after we make the slip knot. So for the slip knot, you just take and fold the yarn over on itself to make a loop. Put your crochet hook through the loop and then hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make a chain of 68. So just yarn over go through the loop for your first chain, second, third, fourth. So go ahead, finish a chain of 68 and then come back. So after you finish your chain of 68, then you're going to make three treble crochet into the seventh chain from the hook. So count back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hold that stitch with your middle finger and thumb, yarn over twice, go into that seventh stitch from the hook, bring up a loop. So now you have four loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two of the loops. You have three loops remaining. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two loops, two loops remaining. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the two remaining loops. So you just completed a treble crochet. Then you're going to make two more treble crochet into the same stitch. So yarn over twice, 
go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. So we finished our second treble crochet. We're going to make one more in the same stitch. Then you're going to chain two and then you're going to make another treble crochet into the same stitch then you're going to chain two and then make three more treble crochets into the same stitch so yarn over twice, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop complete your treble you're going to make three of them into the same stitch. And then that completes what I call the butterfly stitch. So I made a, punt, a shawl using this same stitch pattern. So if you wanted to make that next, I have a separate video tutorial for that. So now you're going to chain two and then you're going to skip three stitches on that starting chain. Don't miss that first one, it's very close to the stitch that you put your butterfly stitch into. So skip one, two, three, and then in the fourth stitch you're going to make another butterfly stitch. Actually, you're not going to make another butterfly stitch, you're going to make a double crochet. So you yarn over, go into that fourth stitch, make a double crochet, then you're going to chain two, you're going to skip two stitches on that starting chain, one, two, and then you're going to make a double crochet into the third stitch. So yarn over, go into that third stitch, bring up a loop, complete a double crochet, and then chain two. One, two. So this is what the pattern is going to look like, butterfly stitch, and then you have the chain twos and double crochets. So I'm going to make one more set with you. So now we're going to skip three stitches on the starting chain. One, two, three, and you're going to make three, you're going to make a butterfly stitch into that fourth chain. So for the butterfly stitch, remember you're going to make three treble crochet to start. So yarn over twice, skip three, and in that fourth stitch you're going to make three treble crochets into the same stitch. So there's my first treble. Yarn over twice, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, make my second treble. And my third treble into the same stitch. Then I'm going to chain two, make one treble crochet into the same stitch, then I'm going to chain two, and then make three treble crochet into the same stitch. To complete the butterfly stitch. Then you're going to chain two, you're going to skip three stitches and again remember that first stitch is sometimes hard to see don't, so don't skip that first stitch so that's one, two, three, and then I'm going to make a double crochet into the fourth chain 
or fourth stitch on that starting chain, bring up a loop, make your double crochet, then you're going to chain two, skip two stitches on the starting chain, one, two, and make a double crochet into that third stitch, and you're just going to repeat this pattern all the way across, chain two again, and then you're going to skip three stitches on the starting chain, one, two, three, and then start your butterfly stitch in that fourth stitch on the starting chain. And then you just keep repeating this pattern all the way across to the end, and when you reach the end, you should have a total of six butterfly stitches, and then come back. So this is what my work looks like so far, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six butterfly stitches, and then I have six stitches remaining, six or seven. Then what you're going to do is make a slip stitch into that first chain that you made. So in the first chain, you're going to take your crochet hook and just go right through that first stitch, and then you're going to make a slip stitch. So just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to take and make a chain of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then turn your work. Then you're going to make a treble cluster over the three treble stitches that you made in the previous rose butterfly stitch. So you take and yarn over twice, and then you're going to go into the first treble in that previous rows butterfly stitch, bring up a loop, and then you're going to yarn over and then go through two of the loops, yarn over and go through two of the loops, and then you're going to have two loops remaining. Go ahead and yarn over twice, Go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. Now you have three loops remaining, yarn over twice, go into that next stitch, bring up a loop, then you're going to yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two, and then you have four loops remaining on the hook. Go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all four for a treble crochet cluster. Then you're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Now you're going to make a double crochet into that center treble stitch from the previous rose butterfly stitch. So just yarn over. Go into that center treble from the previous row, bring up a loop, and then complete a double crochet. Then you're going to make a chain of five. One, two, three, four, five. Then you're going to make a treble crochet cluster over the last three treble crochet stitches from the previous rose butterfly stitch. So yarn over twice, go into that first treble from the previous row, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two, you have two loops remaining, yarn over twice, go into the next stitch and bring up a loop, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. Now you have three loops remaining, yarn over twice, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. Then you're going to yarn over and go through all four.
to complete your treble crochet cluster stitch. So that's the set that you're going to make over each previous row butterfly stitch. Now in between you're going to make a chain of two, one, two, and then you're going to double crochet into that first double crochet from the previous row. So yarn over, go into that double crochet stitch from the previous row, bring up a loop, and complete a double crochet. Then you're going to chain two, and then you're going to double crochet into the double crochet from the previous row. And then this is what my work looks like so far. Then you're going to chain two, and then you're going to make a treble crochet cluster and just repeat that pattern all the way across and then come back. So I've reached the end and I worked my last treble crochet cluster over the previous rose butterfly stitch. Now I'm going to go ahead and chain two and then you're going to make a treble crochet into the top stitch from the previous row where we made our slip stitch. So you just yarn over twice and then go into that top stitch from the previous row where we made our slip stitch. Do that again. And then you're going to bring up a loop and then complete your treble crochet on the end. Then you're going to go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the ends of your dog collar together. So now you can either make your name collar or you can made, have one made. I had this one by Sarah Dippity. Is sterling silver and it has a little surfboard charm on it. It's really cute and it says her name Anastasia. Wherever we lose faith in humanity think of ricochet and know goodness always prevails. So ricochet is a surf dog and you can read more about ricochet on her site serendipity. So serendipity.com and this name tag that I got came in this cute little bag with her name on it, Serendipity. And here's more information about Serendipity. So my name tag came with a chain. So I wanted the chain to be removable. So on my collar I have the butterflies facing up just like this. And then I place the center of the chain in the center of the collar and then I just tied little bows to the back and then I'm just going to tie another bow around after I'm going to put this on the dog first and then finish tying the bows around so as I'm putting the collar on the dog, I'm making sure that I have the, the collar upside down so that when I put it on the dog, it'll be right side up. So again, you start upside down and then when it goes onto the dog, the right side will be facing up, which will be the ribbons on top. So just make sure that the two ends of the collar are not twisted as you bring them together and then you're going to sew them together. Don't worry about the chain at this point. My chain is kind of hanging down and then I'm just going to take the two ends of the collar and I'm going to sew them together making sure that it's not twisted and that I have the right side facing up. Then after I finished sewing the collar together I'm going to take and bring the name tag straight up 
and then sew it to the collar. Then after I sewed the name tag on, I just took any of the excess chain, put it inside the collar, and then tied a little bow to keep it in place. And then I just did that on both sides of her collar. So after I finished placing all of the hair where I wanted it on the dog, I just wanted to show you, this is the back of the dog, and here is the neck. So I just laid the dog in a position where I could take and brush the hair and make it look cottony in appearance. So now, after you have all of the hair brushed out the way that you like, you can take and trim and groom your dog the way that you want. So this is what she looks like right now. And there's her collar and her name tag. And then I'm just going to trim her hair all around.